Steve, how's it going, man? Long time no see. I mean, it's been since uh, autofocus, right? And I, I wouldn't, I was, we were all really drunk back then. No, we weren't. Yes, we were. No. Yes, we, yes, we, no, we weren't. Yes, we were. It was the bad old days. It's Baltimore. Come on, it's Balmer, man. Hey, yo, down, we're, ha we're hanging out, you know, Fells Point there, going, you know, to the waterfront. Just on the show, we didn't go, you know, we went down there. No, we hang out at Cooper's, which is still there. I was just there. Steve, how's it going, man? Um, yeah, those were good times. Those were really god darn good times. Um, it's funny. So I was just there. I was just there right before the whole world shut down. And, uh, because I love Baltimore. And it's, well, you know, you live there. In so many ways, it's changed. And in so many ways, it hasn't, which is great, which is what I love. But I was, and then a year ago, I stayed. I didn't pay for it, obviously, because I can't afford that, man. Yeah, it's, it's way too expensive. Uh, I stayed at that hotel, the Pendry, the Sagamore Pendry, a very fancy hotel. But I brought my wife and daughter there, which was amazing, because I, I just I walked them into this little banquet hall, and I go, that's where my that's where my desk was. That was this was the squad room. And then every morning we'd have breakfast downstairs where all the trailers were, which is crazy. So it's cool. It's cool that it's been preserved, and it's a beautiful hotel. I can't afford to stay there. Um, but uh, luckily, one of my Baltimore friends uh, footed the bill. Footed as, as one did. But no, I love it, man. How are you doing? How's everything going? Yeah, you know, you're hunkering down there during the COVID. You know, getting you know, what, are, what are you doing, hon? You're just, just, just chilling out there? Um, nah, man, I love it. I was just, like I said, I was just there in the beginning of March, right before we all had to flee, and I came back to Toronto. I know I should be wearing an I should be wearing an O's cap, but I'm not wearing an O's cap because now I'm representing Toronto. Wearing Jay's cap, it's fine. I don't really I don't really care about baseball. Fun stories. You know, there's a lot of fun stories. There was a lot of great stories from homicide, um, and many of them I can actually still remember. Um, oh, jeez, but many of them I'm, I've been sworn to 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 ultimate secrecy. That's probably the only reason that Clark put me in the shields, because I know all the secrets. I know where the bodies are buried. And he's like, I'll put you in the thing, and then they kill you, which is great, right? I had, you didn't see it coming. My old partner directs it. I'm in the first episode. I'm dead. Um, ah, I got, I'll tell you a story. I'm trying to think. I've got so many, so many fun ones uh, from our time back there. Um, most of them involve just leaving work and drinking all night and getting into all sorts of mischief. Um, but I'm thinking, oh, Steve, I'd have to kill you. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't because you could probably, you, I'm sure you could. We're not going to, why, why did violence have to come into it? You know what? It's because we're talking about homicide. We're talking about homicide life on the streets. I'll tell you a funny story. This wasn't, was this the autofocus season? I'm trying to remember. How all the seeds? I think it was. So it was the it was it was the uh, suicide episode on the boat, so, where Kellerman's really distraught, and we had this director from Germany, so Uli Adel, his name was Uli Adel. So one morning we show up on the set, and Uli's like, it's a scene with me and Clark, obviously, and uh, he he has it come into our car. It's like I want to hear you run the scene, run the scene for me. I want I want to hear how it's going to sound. And so Clark and I do the scene, and he's like, no, 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 it's, no. you're going to have to slow it down because no one, it, it's, it's not clear of what you're saying. And I'm like, it's not clear what we're saying because you don't speak English. He didn't, he was from Germany, um, and he didn't, and so if, if I'd slowed it down for the German audience, then that would have made sense. But for the American audience, we were speaking at the right pace. I think that's the safest story I can tell you. All the other ones involve gunfights, knives, lots of, now some legal drugs, but mostly still illegal, and lots of booze. Steve, man, I miss you. I, I miss you. I mean, it's been so, it's been years, but thanks for reaching out. I really appreciate it, and um, let's fight the good fight. Let's get this show on one of the streaming networks. It's, it's, it's absurd that we can't watch it. I, I'd like to show it to my child when she's in her 20s. Um, yeah, those were good times. Autofocus was a funny one too, wasn't it? It was because it was like half on videotape because Brody was shooting everything. That's the one, right? That's the one we're talking about. I know it. That was another one. Um, uh, it was a line where Giordello, um, Yafet, he had to say risotto, but he was like, risotto. 
he couldn't, he, he, he would, uh, it's not that funny though. There were funnier things. Maybe that, were you there? Did you see his bodyguard? He had a bodyguard, a, a Nation of Islam bodyguard on set during that show, uh, during most of that season, who would go into his trailer and trek, check for bombs every morning. I'm gonna leave you with that tidbit. That's a good one, yeah? Come on, yeah, he, he, had, he had your bodyguard go in there and check. It's not like you had your own dressing room. It was a different dressing room every day. All right, hon. Just keep it real, you know. I, I'll, um, I'll see you down there in Baltimore once the world goes back to normal. All right, have a natty bow, and I'll see you later.